Hello and welcome to Dawn Chorus Writes, a miraculous ladybug fan fiction and audio fiction. This is the series Meeting Under the Stars and this is a special volume. So I hope you have the time, sit back, relax and listen from chapters 1 to 10. A massive shout out to Jade Carroll for the use of her beautiful, stunning, commissioned piece of artwork for the thumbnail. And make sure you send me some likes comment down below what you think of it and make sure you subscribe so you do not miss out on future parts of this series and other volumes to come i hope you enjoy meeting under the stars chapter one marinette lifted the hat with one hand and balanced the plate of baked goods in the other Leftover from the day's sales from her parents' bakery were waiting for her on the kitchen counter. She took the last step into her bedroom and carefully lowered the wooden door so not to disturb the household. It was late. The moonlight cast silver rays through the large windows which led out to the balcony and across her mezzanine bed and down to a studio below. Blending in with the warm light of her work lamp and a single candle burning on a coffee table. It filled the air with a subtle scent of ginger, cinnamon and sweet undertone of brown sugar. To her it was the smell of autumn as it shifted towards winter. She sighed. The Akuma fight had been a long one, lasting hours battling back and forth with only her and Kat fighting against two of Phoenix and Bear's lackeys. They no longer called them victims. The local supporters of Hawkmoth's newest partner understood exactly what they were doing and growing bolder with each battle. She slid the plate on the coffee table next to the candle and threw down two pillows from her chase long onto the thick rug. One had a hand-stitched black umbrella sewn on polka-dotted pink fabric she had made almost six years ago. Wow, had it really been that long? She muttered to herself. The other was a black pillow with a hand-stitched white outline of a cat. It was a simple design. As soon as Kitty had seen it, claimed it was his forevermore. The memory brought a smile to her face and for a brief moment, she glimpsed his scent issuing out of the cosy cushion before it landed down next to her. Her body ached with exhaustion and her mind kept replaying over recent events where she and Kitty had failed and succeeded, learning as much as she could from this new enemy. Her body slumped down onto the floor, stretching it out from side to side. She lifted her hand up and grabbed one of the nearest sweet treats. She picked at the flaky pastry, feeling the thin layer dissolve on her tongue and the caramel almonds giving her spirits a quick shot of pleasure. I hope you're intending to leave one of those for me, princess. A grin spread across her face at the sound of his voice filling the silence, followed by a dull thud as his feet touched down. His tall, muscular frame of a man instead of a boy created a shadow over her, where there used to be moonlight. Hello, kitty. She patted on the spot on the floor next to her. I picked up extras. That was a long one for you. After all these years, she longed to speak the word us instead of you. When he visited her after our battle, to tell him she was here, his ladybug. That the woman, his friend, was his partner, his best friend. She wanted to tell him she knew how he felt, the worry the stress of the near misses, and that one mistake would mean all the true victims of Paris would never return. The price of being a so-called superhero. But as they lay on their backs, body and mind recovering, they would regard themselves as lucky and not heroes. His leather-clad arm stretched over her and picked up the pastry as he collapsed onto his spot his head absorbing into his pillow as she leant on hers. Picking at the sugary part, she heard him let out a long sigh and waited for him to speak. When they had been 14, they had naturally developed friendship, being Marinette with Cat Noir. 
speaking to each other during battles and even once he had confessed his love of Ladybug. And yet, it wasn't until the battle where both her parents had been akumatized and Tiki had succumbed to sugar that they really talked. That night, he had dropped by on the balcony to check that she and her family were okay. For the first time, she had seen the burden of self-doubt weighing heavy on his shoulders. She had felt foolish for not seeing this side of Cat before and how the jokes he played were sometimes a real mask. She wondered if he had anyone to discuss it all with, knowing herself the price of secrecy. In the end, she had turned to Alia and disclosed her ladybug identity, believing she had to seem strong to Cat, that she was indeed worthy of being the guardian. Back then, he had loved her as an idol, this perfect being, and wouldn't hear her having any faults or fears. She believed she was protecting him, but in reality, she had cut him out and failed her friend. This way, she thought he could have someone to listen to him, and she gained insight into the needs of her partner. Bit by bit, she discovered little details of her friend and how lonely his life was at times. It wasn't until after the last battle of Shadow Moth that they had taken down one half of their enemy's team but crumpled their own. Cat relied on Marinette and the comfort of their meetings under the stars. Now, after most Akuma fights, she would leave her window open at night with a plate of pastries waiting for him, willing him to talk and for her to listen. Princess. Yes, Kitty? Is this spiced apple and tasting? Yeah, Papa is trying out a new recipe. I like it. Cat let out a happy sigh, showing he was ready to talk soon. I'll pass it on to him. I think autumn might be one of my favourite seasons. The colours, the change in temperature, but mostly the flavours and smells. He inhaled deeply the scent of the candle. From the corner of her eye, she could watch the warm glow glisten off his magical leather suit, rippling across the indents of his muscles. The rhythm of his breathing, which was fast at first, slowed and become deeper. He had remarked on the candle last time and Marinette got another for the next hangout. She smiled at another similarity they shared. She couldn't help but giggle at the exaggerated noises he was making as he licked his fingers. That was perfect. What's next? He rolled onto his side, facing his princess. I saw that. What? Trying to hold a hint of innocence. The look? I would have thought by now, being 20 and all, you might have outgrown the cat puns. What? And have you missing out? I know how much you secretly enjoy them. Oh yeah, absolutely. You found me out after all this time, my kitty. Marinette turned on her side and saw his glowing green eyes staring back. Her expression had changed from a smirk to a soft smile. He leaned in a little closer, stretching out his arm over her, holding her gaze. Just when their faces were inches apart, he pulled back his arm and quickly shoved the largest mouthful of pastry into his mouth. A puff of ice and sugar billowed around them, drifting into the exposed skin. Charming cat! What a prince! They burst out laughing. He struggled to contain the enthusiastic mouthful amongst the chuckles. You know you love me, princess. He reached out for another mouthful of water and cleared his throat. In a way, she loved her cat, her kitty, but in the two years of becoming closer to her partner, she never allowed herself the freedom to explore her feelings. The only future they could have would be the one when she discovered the man behind the mask. Until then, it wasn't safe to do so. Marinette knew she had to guard her heart from this man, who... If he asked, she might give it freely. However, now was not the time to think about such things. For the last three years, life had been tough enough without adding romance into it. 
She had even reached a great place with Adrian, becoming close friends as he moved out of his controlling home and in with Alia and Nina. She could talk to him now, hang out together, just the two of them. In fact, he was the one to offer to help her in the aim to become fitter and faster. She had said it was to help to reduce stress, but in fact discovered it gained extra time from transforming back when she was Ladybug by making the whole of her stronger. She let out an internal grumble at the idea of her morning run with him tomorrow morning. No. She had resided to the fact that they were only ever going to be good friends. Luca was now dating Zoe, both of which attended art college with her. There had been a few dates with fellow students, but each time faced the same problem of being Ladybug. No, now was not the time for that. She had her friends, stolen peaceful moments like this one, and the ever-growing demand of studies and saving Paris regularly. Princess? Yes. Sorry, did you say something? Your mind was on its travels again. I'm listening. Refresh me again. I was asking how your designs are going for the winter exhibition. I think someone might be a little tired tonight for chatting. He wiggled his eyebrows, resulting in a tiny chuckle. No, I'm not tired. <sighs> she said through a yawn. I'm listening. He watched her eyelids drifting shut as he brushed away a row piece of hair from her face. Time for bed, I think. Cat manoeuvred onto his knees and scooped his princess into his arms. Marinette wrapped an arm around his neck and nuzzled into his chest, breathing in a scent of sugar and butter and his own personal musk. But we didn't get to talk. In one move, he jumped up to the mezzanine and laid her gently down onto the bed and pulled the blanket over her. I'm good, I promise. Sweet dreams, my princess. He brushed her hair back one last time from across her face and leaned in, tempting to place a kiss on her forehead, but something stopped him. He angled back and let out a sigh, pushing open the window but felt resistance in his tail. Kitty, stay, please. She repeated the same gesture, patting the space next to her on the bed. He was holding something back. She could feel it. At least this way he wouldn't be alone. She heard the latch shut above them before lowering himself down. The bed dipped in the middle with the extra pressure of his body and instinctively Marinette rolled over and laid her head on his chest. The sensation of safety being needed, wanted, was all-encompassing as he wrapped his arms across her shoulder, enveloping her deeper into his chest. <sighs> Good night, my kitty, she said through a yawn, stroking her fingers lightly across his chest the tiny dents in the leather tickling her fingertips. Her sleepy mind drifted lightly across the calm sea of the slow breathing until she felt the shudder of his chest. Small waves at first and then one large crashed between them. She wanted to lift her head up and gaze at him to read his mind, to brush away the tears that were now soaking into his mask and down his face to be the one who kissed the sorrow away, but she couldn't, she wouldn't. To take that step and break what they had formed, not knowing where it might lead, she wasn't even sure he would welcome it from her as Marinette. Maybe a while back as Ladybug, but even that had changed between them. Without looking, her hand drifted up towards his cheek, soaked in tears. Gently, she guided her thumb across his cheekbone, rubbing away the pain. He released one of his hands from her back and pressed it into her loving gesture as his head leaned against it, sandwiching her hand in between. For the first time, she noticed the jagged sensation of stubble making her aware of the man behind the mask. 
It took every piece of strength not to gaze upwards, for her eyes to lock onto his, scared of what might happen if she did. Shh, I'm here, Kitty, was all she could muster for now. After a few more minutes, his breathing calmed, mirrored her own, and released the grip on her hand. She gave it one more stroke before bringing it back down around his waist. She wanted to tell him he was loved, that she was here for him, no matter what. No. Instead, they pulled each other in tighter, until the sea was calm once more. She knew once the stars had gone to bed, the sun came out, he would be gone. Chapter 2 Come on, slow coach! Marinette waved a hand behind her. At this rate, I'm going to win the bet and you'll be buying breakfast for a week. She sprinted forward and aimed her body at an angle to take on the row of tyres. Adrian watched her smile at him and felt a sensation of warmth wash over him. Fatigue consumed his entire body. After last night's Akuma fight and then forcing himself to break away from Marinette's hold when she was deep enough asleep had been torture. It wasn't until 2am he had collapsed into his own bed, only to be awoken by his alarm three hours later. He didn't know how she did it, have this much energy in the morning. She had experienced the same Akuma fight as him. She had even been knocked out from one of the blasts, sending her through a wall. His heart had stopped beating for the entire time it took for her body to respond to his touch and open her eyes, reliving the same relief that washed over his body, not knowing if he could survive losing both his partner, Ladybug, but also his love, Marinette. If only he could tell her of his fear, and how the painful thought brought him to tears last night. What is with you this morning? Her face held a smile, but her eyes had the same look of concern she had last night. If only she knew it was the same man. I think someone is going to need an extra shot of green juice after this workout. It's a good job you're paying. She chuckled before taking on the monkey bars. I wouldn't count on it. He laughed back, pushing his body and mind to the limits to go faster. This afternoon was a project session, free time. If he had some luck, there wouldn't be another Kuma fight and he might be able to get a cheeky nap in before his shift at work tonight. After another 20 minutes, he and Marinette collapsed on the grass. I don't think I can move. Will you carry me back to the bakery? She gazed at him, trying to hold back the giggles with a serious tone. Otherwise, you might find me still asleep in the same spot this time tomorrow. I think the people who have booked out the park gym afterwards might have something to say about that. He gave her a grin in return. Plus, I was going to ask the same of you. I didn't know your body could hurt like this. Miss Park was one of the better ideas to convince Mayor Bourgeois that Paris needed its own outdoor gym. To be honest, I'm surprised how much use it gets. But I wish sometimes we booked out a slot later than 6am. It's the only way we can fit it in between my class at the art college and yours at the university. Perfectly placed between the two. Adrian had to contain himself, not to repeat the word with his own pun, perfectly, as Kat would do. No. Here he was Adrian, and not Kat, alone in her room, suddenly aware that his fingers were almost touching hers, and the thought of last night replaying in his head. Adrian jumped to his feet. Is it time to go? Marinette moaned and held her hand up to him in a mocking, pitiful manner. Help me! Adrian clasped his hand around hers, ignoring the tingling feeling and yanked her up. 
he had done it a little too forceful and ended up slamming their bodies together. To stop her from falling backwards, he instantly wrapped his arms around her, with her head tucked underneath his. A smell of her shampoo filled his senses. The same smell from the secret night, lying in each other's arms as she tried to comfort her friend and partner. It was the same smell that comforted him when he was alone at night, waking from nightmares and buried secrets. Sorry, Marinette took a step back, pulling herself out of his embrace, the same blush to her cheeks he knew so well. I think I might need a shower before class, but first breakfast and you are paying my friend. Friend, he muttered to himself. A bet is a bet. She gave him a wide grin and a light chuckle as she made her way back towards the bench to pick up a bag. Fine, but not doubles. I don't get paid until next week. But I'm starving. Look at me, practically wasting away. Her imitation of Ursula breaking through. Her idea of a joke, ever since he had told her he hadn't seen The Little Mermaid and she had forced him to watch it. Curled up in the flat he shared with Alia and Nino on a wet Sunday afternoon. She had come out with it when he had denied her a third helping of ice cream and riding a sugar high. It ended up with the two of them in a popcorn fight and laughing so hard he couldn't breathe. At last they had called it truce and half a scoop as a deal. Her head leaning on his shoulder, curled up under the blanket with the girl he loved. And yet, and yet... They were friends, still only friends, as Adrian and as Kat. He knew she wasn't dating, so that wasn't what was holding her back. Perhaps she didn't see him that way, and for now, that was okay. He was lucky enough to have a great friend like Marinette, his princess in his life, and for that, he wouldn't risk it for the world. Do you think they might put a shot of espresso in your green juice today? What? He pulled a face at the idea of it, making her laugh. You are not with it today! Lost somewhere in there. She reached up on the balls of her toes and ruffled his sweaty blonde hair. For a moment she paused, staring at him, stroking down his temple lovingly, the faces merely an inch apart. He could lean in and kiss her, confess his love and all that held dear in his heart, tell her he was Cat and she was his lady. But he had fallen in love with her well before he knew. And yet the moment passed. She pulled a mocking facial expression of yuck at his sweaty hair and wiped it on his top, letting out a cheeky laugh. He couldn't help but beam at the sound and laughing as he took chase after her. At the gates of the park, he made his usual left turn towards the usual cafe for breakfast, when Marinette gazed down at her watch. Crap! Is it that time? It's 7.30 already! Oh, really? He studied the clock on his phone and she was right. I need to go. I can't be late for class again. She gave him a knowing look as images of her running late into class all those times back in high school. I was late last week and Mr. Beaufort still hasn't let me forget it. She placed the handle of her bag over her shoulder. See you tomorrow? She raised her hand in the air and gave a half wave. Yeah, count me in as always. She answered back with an enormous grin before turning and running down the street. The opposite way he was going. He craved sleep, moaning at the thought of class in an hour and trying to stay awake as he discussed past kings of France in his history lesson. The memory of last night flashed into his mind, holding his princess in his arms, wishing he could stay. Maybe a nap now and then a kuma fight later. This way he wouldn't have to wait so long until he saw her again fighting with his lady and sleeping with his princess.
Chapter 3 Marinette ran through the back door of the bakery and flew up the stairs. She had an hour to have a shower, gather her designs and make it back across Paris for the start of class. She stepped out of the shower, towel drying her long black hair and glanced up at the clock in her room. Tiki and the other Kwame's were flying around the space, doing a little dance to the track playing in the background. She stepped over the two pillows that were still in the same position as last night and grinned at the memory of Kat taking that huge bite of pastry. Her stomach grumbled at the thought of breakfast and missed the chance to grab her favourite egg wrap with Adrian this morning at the usual cafe. There had been something wrong with him this morning. He wasn't his happy self, noticing his focus drifting off and how he'd looked at her a couple of times. She sighed, thinking about the two most important men in her life that were going through something at the moment and for the life of her, she couldn't work out what. Noticing that there was still one pan au chocolat with her own recipe of creamy ganache filling inside sat invitingly on the plate. She lifted it up and picked at the pastry, her mind distracted in thought. No, now was not the time. Focus, Marinette, or you'll be late again, she told herself in a stern voice. She mirrored Kat's action of last night and took the biggest mouthful, chuckling to herself if only he could see her now. She quickly shoved on her jeans from yesterday, still covered in stray pieces of pink thread, and picked out a simple white shirt. She had embroidered golden maple leaves and a single ladybug on one leaf her hidden rebellion on the left side across her heart. Next week would signal the start of November, but there was still a hint of warmth to the time of year. Tying her hair into a messy bun, she gazed around the bedroom slash studio, listing off in her head of what she needed for today's classes. This morning was a practical in fashion construction, followed by afternoon classes in history of design, learning from the masters and the progression in fashion. Afterwards, Tiki would give her own personal opinions in the changes of fashion, comparing previous holders of the Ladybug Miraculous and how it was much simpler now. It was still strange to think that her little friend and all the other Kwamis had been around since the dawn of time. In fact, it hurt her head to think of what they might have witnessed, and in Plague's case, done. She loved her college, being an art student, walking the halls with fellow artists much like herself. She had found where she truly belonged. It had been miraculous that she had won the award for part scholarship. With the help of her parents and agreeing to continue to live at home to reduce further expenditure, her dream had become a reality. The moment Zoe had got a place by impressing the panel with her modern street life design that held a sense of graphic design to it, had made it even more exciting. That she would still have that connection to her old life with her. Most of her high school class had got into Paris University, including Alia, Nino and Adrian. She shook her head, removing an image of him giving her unusual soft stares this morning. She made a mental note to reach out to him this weekend to see if she could help her friend. Then there was Luca. Music was in the adjoining campus next to theirs, where he was quickly getting a name for himself for crafting stunning instruments. When Zoe and Luca had told her they were dating, Marinette was happy for them. Really, she was. They made sense and complimented each other. Zoe could give Luca the love and attention she couldn't. Now, after three years of being together, The thought of her and Luca dating or even being in love with her felt strange, as if it was another life. Marinette, we're going to be late, Tiki said, floating in front of her, using her more bossy tone to focus Marinette's thoughts. She glanced at the clock, and suddenly she had lost 20 minutes. Blast! Her lack of focus this morning? She rammed her feet into a pair of tan ankle boots, picked up her oversized bag holding her design folder and watched Tiki speed in before sprinting out the door. She was grateful the subway was less crowded this morning, which seemed a little strange for a Thursday. 
She shrugged her shoulders and placed in her Bluetooth earbuds and clicked on a podcast she had been listening to. Thankful there was a subway stop outside the art college, she scrambled up the front steps with five minutes to spare. The large wooden corridors made it hard to run down, echoing to all the classrooms of a late student. This was the time she wished she had the stealth of her ladybug suit. She opened the studio door and was relieved not to see Mr. Buford standing at the front of the workstations. She let out a deep breath, slipped into her seat and dropped her heavy bag onto the floor. Here, it looks like you need it. Zoe, seated on the table next to her, handed her a metal bottle with a cold droplets of condensation running down the side. Thank you. She took an enormous mouthful, noticing how parched she was from all the dashing about. Why are you late this time? Zoe nodded in thanks for return of the bottle. I was working out with Adrian this morning. Zoe lifted an eyebrow and a sly smirk spread across her lips, holding Marinette's gaze. Oh, it's not like that and you know it. We're friends. Don't you do that most mornings? Why are you late then today? Refusing to move the teasing look from her face. We didn't even have time for breakfast. I don't know. Time doesn't seem to be on my side today. I can't seem to hold my focus. Marinette pulled her design folder out of her bag and placed it on her workstation. Were you up late last night sketching? Yeah. Something like that. Marinette turned her face away feeling her cheeks blush slightly at the thought of being curled up in her kitty's arms. Can I have all attention on me, please? Mr. Buffo called out, surprising the class. He was in his early forties, but held a youthful glow and wore a slim, cut, tailored suit that reminded her more of the sixty styles with a narrow tie hanging loosely this morning. I had some interesting news given to me this morning. To coincide with the winter exhibition this year, Mr. Grass had sponsored a fashion show for the top three students who show the most promise. You will submit your final designs in two weeks for five statement pieces. I should not need to tell you the enormous opportunity this is and the potential it could have on your future careers. Marinette and Zoe stared at each other in amazement before the fear crept in. How on earth was she going to manage to do it all in time? It was strange that Gable O'Grass was doing this. Since the death of Natalie, kicking out his own son from the house and cutting Adrian off financially, apart from the secret trust fund his mother had set up for him, Gable had cut himself off even more than he had done before. No one had seen or heard from him apart from on rare occasions. So why this? Why now? Adrian slumped onto his bed and closed his eyes for a moment, gathering enough energy to have a shower before class. Wanting to hide under the bedsheets and fill his tired mind with sweet dreams. As soon as they entered the room, Plag had speeded out of his gym bag and into another cheese stash under the bed, groaning in delight. Adrian let out a groan as three loud knocks tapped against his bedroom door. Adrian, is that you back? Alia shouted through the wood. Yep. How's Mary? Good. Want any breakfast? Nope. He tried to keep his tone polite. He knew she meant well, but sometimes she acted a bit too motherly. Okay, there's fresh coffee in the kitchen. Thanks. We're heading out early. Okay. Nino, speak to him. Something's up. He could still hear her muffling voice through the door and the sound of his best mate attempting to refuse. This time there was only one quick tap on the door before it opened a fraction and saw Nino's cap edge through the gap. Dude, can I? Come in. Nino hovered before resting on the bottom edge of Adrian's bed. Do you want me to get the notes for this morning session? I heard you didn't come back until late and then ran out this morning. If you need some sleep, I can... 
Oh, that would be great, man. Thanks. Adrian gave his mate a grateful smile. Nina paused mid-standing. Oh, and it's Halloween this weekend. Some of American exchange students are hosting a party. We're thinking of going. You want to join us? Should be fun. Mari says she was going. Alia shouted from the hallway, resulting in an eye roll and a loving grin all at the same time from Nino. Yeah, sure. Not sure what I would wear. If only he could turn up as Cat, or maybe Mr. Bug. The idea brought a slight smile to his face. You could always ask Mari's advice tomorrow morning. Alia continued to shout out. Thanks, Alia. Might do. At the same time, tell her you love her. Alia! Nino shouted back, wrinkling his eyebrows at Adrian in a sorry gesture. The door burst open. Well, it's been years and he still hasn't done anything about it. What's stopping you from telling her? You're single, so is she. Alia, out! We need to go. Oh, yeah. She stepped forward, ignoring the disgruntled look on Adrian's face and the protest from her boyfriend. She placed a hand on his shoulder, said with love, I know. Nina removed her hand and shuffled her back towards the bedroom door. Think about it. Mm, yep. Sorry, dude. Adrian waited for the front door to click shut before letting out a moan and placed a pillow over his head. She has a point. You should tell her. Plague's voice filtered through the mattress. It's not that easy, Plague, and you know why. He held his little moan of delight at the sound of his Kwame eating the last of the cheese. Don't eat it all. That has to last before we go to the cheese shop. You never realize what you have until it's taken away from you. Plague muttered more to himself. Why was it so hard? What was stopping him from confessing his feelings as Adrian? Apart from the fact that he was Cat Noir and she was Ladybug. The fact that he knew she was Ladybug and scared if they took their relationship further, he might act differently as Cat, or that he was keeping the secret he knew who she was. That he had known for a year now and hadn't told her. He had found out by accident. The last piece of the puzzle was when he realised how much he had fallen in love with Marinette and couldn't stop seeing the similarities between the two women. He had felt like the biggest fool and the luckiest guy all at the same time. He more than understood why they couldn't tell each other their identities. He wasn't a boy anymore and the risk seemed even greater now with the growing threat. There was too much at risk if Hawkmoth or some bear found out who they were. When he realised the other half, when he realised her other half, it all made sense. He decided to continue his visits as Cat, meeting under the stars after the battle so that he could vent, talk, because he appreciated what his partner had done for him and made him love her all the more. But now... It was becoming torturous, the need for her, and yet finding the strength to resist and not act on it. He groaned into the pillow. Why was this all so hard? He'd even tried going on a few dates, but that was useless. None of them could compare to his princess. Instead, he brushed the other women off and made up an excuse to spend more time with Marinette, like getting up at 5am to train with her every single day. He slumped off the bed in a rolling motion, dragging himself into the kitchen for a cup of coffee. One large mug, a quick catnap, and then catch up on the assignment he had missed doing last night. That would be his plan for the day. Chapter 4 
Ladybug stared at Cat as he glided through the air, using his baton to jump from roof to roof. She glanced back down at the growing scene in front of her. The wind was growing, focusing on one spot like a fixed tornado, whilst a creature that belonged more in a nightmare was contained inside. She felt his presence next to her, tall and strong. Keeping her focus on the devastation, she greeted him with her usual manner. Cat? LB? What are you thinking? He watched how she was calculating the attack. This is the third time in two weeks we have faced the same akumatized person and sentient monster. On each of the previous battles, the person was detransformed and nightmare dissolved before we were able to find the akuma and the amok. We have no idea who this person is and why Hawkmoth and Phoenix and Bear are doing this. She glanced at him for the first time and saw the same confusion she felt. It feels like they are playing some sort of game. We weren't told the rules. Exactly. We are playing by the old rules. You want to change it up? Cat raised his eyebrows at her and a playful grin spread across his lip. I think we need to learn as much as we can. So I think you should combine Plague and Sass together to form Snake Noir whilst I become Dragonbug, taking on Storm. Cat's smile turned to surprise. You think we can hold that much power long enough? We're no longer kids. We're not Minibug and Kitty anymore. I've been feeling my powers shift, getting stronger. Me too. If you think we can do it, my lady, then let's give it a go. He gazed at her as her expression changed from determination to her game face. Ladybug whipped out her yo-yo, giving it a little swipe to open. He stared at wonder as her hand reached in to the white light and pulled out the snake miraculous. Cat placed the bracelet on his wrist and shouted out, Plague! Sass! Unify! With a glow of light, Cat became Snake Noir with turquoise snake scales added to his black suit whilst holding his green mirror. Ladybug continued to pull out the dragon miraculous. Tiki, long, unify. In a flash of red light, Snake Wa watched his ladybug transform into a golden, red and black dragon bug, finishing the transformation in a power stance holding a sword. If you use second chance now, then if it looks like it might pull out early or you think we need more time, pull us back to this moment. With a quick nod, Snake Noir pulled back the snake on his bracelet. Second chance. I'll take on Storm and see if we can contain him whilst you tackle Nightmare. Dragonbug placed a hand on Snake Noir's shoulder. Before she could remove it, he rested his on top of hers. Stay safe out there. You too, she smiled, telling him it was time to shake things up. Wind Dragon! Transforming herself into a swirling golden wind as Snake Noir used his baton to propel himself into the eye of the storm, landing on top of the beast. Cat had named the sentient monster Nightmare after the first time they had battled it, given the horror-like appearance. A giant stature, scaly body enormous snarly teeth and long claws that had given a chance would take a slice at you. It was nothing like they had faced before. There was no purpose to it apart from devastation. Dragonbug swirled around the wind, attempting to catch the figure of a man sprinting in huge circles, dressed in a suit which camouflaged against the backdrop he was creating constantly shifting in colour of grey amongst the swirling wind and darkening clouds above. Storm was gaining ground, consuming larger parts of the city into a tornado as the beast smashed anything in its path. Battling back and forth, taking hit after hit, Snake Noir was getting nowhere. Second chance, he shouted out. I'll take on Storm and see if I can contain him whilst you tackle Nightmare. Dragonbug placed a hand on Snake Noir's shoulder, repeating the same scene as before. Dragonbug? That didn't work. I had to turn back. Dragonbug tried to reevaluate the plan. What if you try to contain Nightmare and I will see if I can set a trap for Storm? Snake Noir said plainly. Okay, let's try your way. 
She gave him a reassuring smile. Over the year, their partnership had become equal in every sense. Wind Dragon! The plan was starting to work. Dragonbug was distracting the beast long enough for Snake Noir to lead Storm to a spot he had selected to use his catalysm and trap him. As Dragonbug paused to transform into Lightning Dragon, she noticed something unusual in the background of the fight. Either it was a shift in light, or something was there that she couldn't see. Distracted, she failed to see the clawed hand swipe from the right, cutting through her and slamming her body into the nearby building. She cried out in excruciating pain, trying to stand. She noticed for the first time blood on her suit. How was this possible? Disorientated and struggling to regain her strength, she neglected to notice the left clawed hand scoop her up and fling her to the ground. Her mind was turning black. No! Dragonbug! Second chance! I'll take on Storm and see if I can tame him whilst you tackle Nightmare. Dragonbug placed her hand on Snake Noir's shoulder, repeating the same scene as before, but stopped at the look of horror on his face before he flung his arms around her. What happened? I don't know. I was about to lead Storm to the spot and it was working until I heard you scream. A sound I never want to hear again. You... You were... bleeding and I think about to... How? That shouldn't be able to happen. She felt him tremble in her arms. Oh, cat, Kitty, I'm okay, see? That's why we have second chance. She tried to take a step back from his embrace and cup his face in her hands. Look at me. I'm okay. But we need to focus and stop them. She stroked away a tear, cascading down his cheek with a thumb. We can do this. You and me. Snake Noir took a deep breath and nodded his head in her hands. As against the wall, my lady, he breathed. Letting go and taking a step back, she tried to regain the focus and not to think about what Cat had just said. Grateful she didn't hold the memory. Tell me, what have we done so far? Snake Noir replayed the last two times of where they went wrong, but also what was going right. So, I think we should try the same again, and I will be more aware. I just wish I knew what exactly went wrong on my side. She removed her gaze from Cat and studied the scene before her. What? What if we recruit another member of the former team to help? He said cautiously. No, not after last time. She shook her head and swiped her sword out in front of her. We are enough, just me and you. We can do this. She stared at him in the eye. Okay, time is ticking. He gave her a look. He gave her a look of not being happy, but willing to keep trying it her way, for now. Wind Dragon, she shouted out, taking flight into the air. The plan was working again. Dragon Bug was distracting the beast long enough for Snake Noir to lead Storm to a spot he had selected to use his catalysm and trap him. As Dragonbug paused to transform into Lightning Dragon, she noticed the same unusual image in the background of the fight. Either it was a shift in light, or something was there that she couldn't see. Not remembering it from before, she repeated the same action, becoming distracted and moving towards it. This time, she noticed the left claw hand at the last second and swiped her sword at it, but failed to see the right claw. Her scream ran out across the city. Second chance! Snake Noir called out instead of running to her side, unable to see the same image of his lady. I'll take on Storm and see if I can contain him, whilst you... Dragonbug stopped, taken by surprise as Cat. Snake Noir wrapped his arms tightly around her. I can't hear that sound again. It's too much. He buried his head into her shoulder. He was starting to scare her, the fear in his voice. Cat, Kitty, talk to me. What's wrong? What happened? 
His voice was muffled in her shoulder, refusing to let her go as he told her about the last three attempts. She ran her fingers through his hair. I'm okay. I'm here. He pulled back. The fear had given way to anger. That's what you said last time, and yet it happened again. He shouted, hitting the chimney stack next to them with his bat on, watching it crumble around his feet. Cat! I wish I knew why, but don't direct your anger at me, aim it at them. She threw her arms out at the monster below, who had destroyed yet another building whilst they were fighting with each other. I'm sorry, it's the curse of this miraculous, remembering what happened when you don't. The look of pain in his eyes could break her heart. No, now was not the time. That would happen after, tonight, under the stars. I know, I get that, but we have to stay focused. She grabbed him by the shoulders. We can do this. She released him, feeling herself getting drawn in. Maybe we need some luck. Lucky charm. She threw her yo-yo into the air, and suddenly a red and black rope appeared. Rope? What are we meant to do with that? He watched her search the horizon, putting the pieces of the puzzle together. I think I know. If you continue with your plan, I can use the wind dragon and the rope to contain Nightmare. She held out the lucky charm in front of her, ready to go. Cat quickly placed a hand on the small of her back, a gesture he had only shown to Marinette before now. Okay, promise me you'll stay safe, he said, giving her a look that implied everything. You will work this time, trust me? She gave him a soft smile, praying silently to herself for it to be true. Always. He removed his hand and changed his look to that of determination. Wind Dragon! The plan was working again. Dragon Bug was distracting the beast long enough for Snake Noir to lead Storm to a spot he had selected to use his catalysm and trap him. Without pausing this time, she started to loop the rope around the clawed hands as the beast tried to take a swipe at her. They might be able to pull it off this time. All of a sudden, Nightmare dissolved, leaving the rope behind, discarded amongst the devastation. The tornado disappeared at the same time as an eerie silence descended over the city. Without wasting any time, Dragonbug threw the rope into the air and called out, Miraculous Ladybugs! An explosion of pink energy created a swarm of tiny ladybugs to zoom around the city, reconstructing buildings and healing people like it never happened. Tiki, long, divide. Snake Dwar leapt through the city and landed in front of Ladybug. Plag, sass, divide. He called out, resulting in a tired-looking Kwame in the air in front of him. Ladybug opened her yo-yo and handed Sass and Long a macaroon each before replacing them back into the miraculous. I saw her, Cat declared. Saw who? Phoenix the Bear? Yeah. She was standing on one of the rooftops, watching the whole show, and just as the plan was about to work, Storm disappeared in front of me. I tried taking Chase after her, but she was gone. What game is she playing? That's the thing. To her, it's a game. I just wish I knew what her purpose was, why it was changing now. And that center monster? How it could hurt you? The final beep called out of the miraculous, signaling it was time to leave. Chapter 5 Cat paced along the rooftop of Notre Dame, watching Marinette's bedroom. He was torn. Does he visit his princess and curl up in her arms? Grateful he could do so, blocking out the horror he had witnessed hours earlier. Or go in there and vent his anger. It wasn't Ladybug's fault at what happened, and yet the feeling of rage and frustration coursed through him. 
Why couldn't he just land in her room and tell her he knows she is Ladybug and try to form a plan on how they were going to stop some bear? Before he knew what he was doing, Cat was vaulting across the river Seine and landed onto Marinette's balcony. He hesitated for a moment, whether he should enter or if this was a dangerous game he was playing, allowing his heart to make his choice. If he needed any more signs that he had the look of a black cat, the heavens opened and cold October rain poured down. Maybe it was someone from above telling him that this was a bad idea. He glanced through the window and saw Marinette bent over her desk, sketching out designs. And then the image of her bloody body lying in his arms not responding to his touch, who played in a loop inside his mind. How close they had come to not succeeding. How close he had gotten to losing the love of his life. Normally, he would simply enter her room, talk or not talk, but knowing she was there made all the difference. He noticed the usual plate of pastries waiting for him, but his nauseous stomach didn't like that idea. Every part of him wanted to reach out and touch her, make sure she was real, that the image he saw now wasn't some sort of trick. His hand hovered above the handle. No, this wasn't right. Using her for comfort, being selfish when he should tell her the truth. He clenched his fist and turned his back. He was about to leap away when, Kitty? Oh! It's pouring down. What are you doing? Come inside. No, I think it's best if I don't tonight. Kitty, please. He heard her moan as the window opened further. Princess, get back inside. He turned round and faced her. No, not without you. She folded her arms, giving him the determined ladybook stare. In a matter of minutes, her clothes were soaked through. The chunky knitted jumper hung off her shoulder as her skinny jeans clung to her legs as a second skin. Princess, I have a magical suit when you do not. If you stay out here, you'll get ill. Then come inside. She tried grabbing at his hand, but he pulled it away. Kitty, what's wrong? Cat didn't reply. Then answer this. Why come here if you weren't planning to come in? I needed to see if you... He stopped himself from finishing the sentence and giving away the secret. Here I am. She took a step closer to him, holding her hands out as if she was approaching a scared animal, not wanting it to dart away. Princess, go inside. Please? No. She stood in front of him, her eyes wide with concern. She reached her hand to his cheek, cupping it gently. Not until you come in with me and dry off, or tell me what is wrong here and now. He peeled back a piece of her hair that was glued to her face, the rain forcing her hair out of the messy bun and hung over her shoulders. His stature meant he had to lean over her gazing into her eyes that held the secrets to his heart. I nearly lost Ladybug today. I nearly lost. But you didn't, did you? She's fine. I don't know what I would do if anything would happen. Why were the words so hard to say? Maybe this was the moment he'd been looking for. Because you still love Ladybug. Her face moved closer to his as she arched up on her bare feet. No. Yes. No. It's... His voice veered off as he struggled to find the words. There was a flash of hurt and then confusion washed across her face. Before he knew what he was doing, Cat leant in. Her lips felt cold at first and then as if the kiss had woken her from a magical slumber, It came to life, warm and soft. Wrapping his arms around her, he pulled her tighter towards him. The moment he'd waited years for, 
dreamt of was finally coming true. Then, in a moment of clarity of what it would mean, of what it could change, Cat paused. He caught a glimpse of Marinette's expression, one of surprise and then love. She wrapped her arms around his neck and returned the kiss. After a while, they pulled apart, but still in each other's arms. Come inside, she whispered. His hands moved from her hair and neck, sliding down her arms into her hands. He gave her a single nod and allowed her to guide him in. Once they were on the bottom level of her room, he noticed her shiver for the first time and a wave of guilt washed over him, forcing her to stand in the freezing rain. You need to change before you get ill, he said softly. Don't go anywhere. Promise me? She let go of his hand and moved to a tall standing cupboard and pulled out three towels. She threw one at Cat, holding back two for herself. I'll only be a moment. He smiled, seeing the blush in her cheeks as she made her way to the bathroom. He waited for the door to click shut before throwing the towel over his head and taking a deep breath as he rubbed it over his hair. Okay, breathe. You kissed Marinette, Ladybug. She kissed you back. Does that mean? Oh, what does that mean? He moaned. Great, the plan for her to fall in love with Adrian has just come apart. The only relationship that could have a future, unless he revealed his identity. But no, he had to kiss her as cat. But she kissed him back. Does that mean she has feelings for cat and not Adrian? Oh, why did he have to make it so much more complicated? And yet, the way she had looked at him reached out to him how could he not have acted are you all right she said with a slight giggle to her voice cat pulled the towel off his head revealing fluffy blonde hair against flushed cheeks yep fine you why did he feel like an awkward teenager all over again better now she continued to rub one of the small towels through her hair at an angle as the low light glowed across her stunning features. She had changed into a simple pink t-shirt and pink pyjama bottoms. I was thinking about making hot chocolate if you fancy one. Sounds great. Let me help you. He rose to his feet as she walked towards him, her bluebell eyes holding his in a way that melted his heart. He wanted to pull her into his embrace and kiss her again. No, take this slow. Marinette smiled and held out her hand for the towel. Great. She dropped them into her basket before opening the hatch door to the living quarters below. There was a lamp on in the corner, creating shadows around the room as the figures moved around the space. She grabbed a saucepan from the bottom cupboard and without thinking, Kat opened the fridge and passed her out the glass bottle of milk. Thank you. It's as if you knew where that was. Princess, it's not as if this is my first time. We have made hot chocolate together. That's true. It has been a while though. She began humming to herself as she focused measuring out the rich cocoa powder into the saucepan. So I was thinking we can watch a film with the hot chocolate, or we could talk. She glanced backwards towards Cat, who was leaning against the table, grinning at her. Even in the low light, he could tell she had turned a beetroot red. He was amazed at her. She had battled the same fight as him, and yet she was the one caring for him. No. Tomorrow they could talk. Tonight... He wanted to stay in this moment of bliss as long as he could. I think a film would be perfect idea. Anyone that featured a handsome cat in it is fine with me. He edged closer, giving her a playful grin. There is only one handsome cat, he said with a flirty tone, and it was his turn to become a shade of deep crimson. They curled up on the bed. After two empty cups of hot chocolate and pastries fewer, 
he held Marinette in his arms. He watched as the over-typical male lead confesses his love to the girl he loved and felt his own becoming sleepy in his arms. If only confessing your feelings was that simple. Princess? She let out a little mumble. I love you. Chapter 6 Marinette jolted awake. An echo of the dream replayed the last segment before fading away. A blend of the Akuma battle she had remembered and what Cat had told her on the rooftop. She had never seen him like that before, and it had scared her. Not just the consequences of the battle, but how Cat reacted to it. Did it mean he still loved Ladybug? But there was another question which it scared her to ask herself. Would his feelings for Ladybug impede their fighting? No, of course not. No, that was a foolish question to ask, right? She glanced down at her bed, hoping she would still find Cat lying in the bed next to her. Then he could pull her into his embrace and tell her that everything would be okay. That her dream was just that just a dream. She wanted him to tell her as Marinette that it was them against the world. But he had gone, like always. Her snooze alarm went off for a second time and groaned at the idea of getting out of her cosy bed and heading out into the cold. She gazed upwards. The rain had passed but dawn was barely visible yet. Memories of last night replayed in her mind, falling asleep in his arms. Memories of last night replayed in her mind, falling asleep in his arms, barely remembering what the film was about apart from the usual man declaring his love for his lady after they kissed. She had strangely heard that line clearly, the film wanting to make a bigger impact. Her fingers touched her lips, the same ones that kissed Cat. Oh, I kissed Cat last night. Or he kissed me? She sat up in bed, an alarm to a tone of voice. Tiki? Tiki sleepily floated down in front of her. Yes, Marinette? I know. But what does that mean? Can I really be in a relationship with Cat as Marinette? Or does that mean I need to tell him I'm Ladybug? Marinette wanted Tiki to come up with all the answers. Marinette, you know you can't. Not when Hawk Moth and his new partner are out there. It's still too dangerous. There it was, the reality of the situation. She had seen the consequences firsthand when she had to battle Cat Blanc. But what would happen if he knew Ladybug was Marinette? For all the love in the world, she didn't want to see that happen. For now, she would need to trust her gut and not her heart. She shook her head, trying to rid her mind of his lips against hers, as they clung on to one another in the rain, like a scene from a chick flick. What have I done? The line she had feared of crossing for months was now a faded mark, left behind amongst this emotional chaos. Her failed safe alarm went off, just in case she fell back to sleep. She needed to meet Adrian. Oh no, Adrian. She knew if she chose Cat, that would, could end her relationship with Adrian. And even though she kept saying they were only friends, part of her didn't, couldn't believe it. A pang of guilt gnawed at her inside. Cat hadn't tried to kiss her again the rest of the night. Maybe it had been a brief lack of judgement. Perhaps it was because of the Kuma fight and needed to feel connected that it hadn't been her he wanted. But then she had kissed him back. What excuse could she give? And yet, if she was honest with herself, he might not have tried to kiss her again, but she knew he had meant it. The look of happiness, peace. She hadn't seen it on his face for a while. Oh no, what is she meant to do? 
it didn't help the fact that the kiss had been amazing and she wanted to repeat the action with every atom of her being. Was she really in love with Kat? Marinette, you'll be late for Adrian, said Tiki, munching on a piece of leftover pastry. Crap. Marinette had made it, only being a few minutes late and heavy out of breath. She glanced around the park, the autumn sun rising behind the elegant buildings, but Adrian was nowhere to be seen. That wasn't like him. Normally he was the first one here, being the closest. She pulled her sleeve up and stared at her watch, 6.10am. He was 15 minutes late, refusing to acknowledge the sense of worry that was forming inside her stomach. Marinette rang his number. Nothing. She tried again. This time got his voicemail. This is Adrian's number. Please leave a message after the beep. Hey, it's me, Marinette, standing in the park alone. I hope everything's all right. Call me when you get this. Bye. Her voice trailed off, unsure of what else to say. She breathed into her hands, rubbing them together. The heat from the jog over was now giving way to the cold and wished she had her hot tea in her hand. Plus, the idea of working out by herself didn't seem appealing this morning. The run over would be enough. She pulled out her phone again and typed out a message. Hey, I'm heading to our usual cafe for a cup of tea. It's a tad cold out this morning. She would normally add, call me, but didn't want to seem pushy. No. They agreed a slot. It was fine for her to be slightly worried. It meant nothing. Call me. Did she put a kiss or no kiss? It seemed natural now for a while to add a single kiss at the end of a text, but last night she had given Kat a real kiss. So did that mean she shouldn't now send one to Adrian? Crap. Men! Okay. Kiss. Sending a kiss is fine. Friends. Yeah. That's all it is. She sent the text message over, waiting to see if the three dots would flash up. Nothing. She flung her bag over her shoulder and pulled her hood over her head. Hot tea. That's what she needed. On the ten minute walk, Marinette checked her phone three times, just in case someone had magically turned the notification alarm off between checks or the lack of sound from any traffic that was blocking out the noise. She got herself a ginseng and ginger tea, plus a cookie for Tiki. The thought of an egg wrap this morning didn't seem so appealing. After checking her phone for the fifth time, she had a crazy idea to go around to her friend's flat. If Adrian wasn't in, then she could do with having a girl talk with Alia. Anyway, she needed her honest opinion on what to do with Kat. Before leaving the cafe, Marinette grabbed a green juice and a cup of coffee for Adrian. He might have simply slept in and would be happy for the gesture. Marinette knocked on the door three times. Morning! She was slightly disappointed to see Alia open the door instead of Adrian. Oh, hey girl! What time is it? Alia looked half asleep and confused. Marinette pulled her phone out of her pocket. 6.40? Sorry, I did I wake you. I was wondering if Adrian was in. Marinette tried to peer around Alia to see if there was a sign, then redirected her attention to a friend, who had furrowed her eyebrows together in a confused look. Alia signalled for Marinette to come in so she could close the door behind her. Yeah, but it's fine. Isn't he normally with you at this time? He didn't show. So I... Marinette held up the drinks in her hand. I thought I would check everything was alright. Alia let out a small chuckle at the gesture and then signalled for Marinette to follow her as she knocked on Adrian's bedroom door. Nothing. She repeated the knock, louder this time. Nothing. Alia slowly pushed the door open and saw a bed that hadn't been slept in. He's not here. Really? Marinette slid past her friend and stood in Adrian's vacant room. Her heart sighed. Where could he be? She handed Alia the coffee cup, who happily drank it and pulled out her phone. No calls, no messages. Babe, what's going on? 
Nino appeared in the hallway, glancing from Alia and then to Marinette, standing in his friend's room. Hey, Marinette, aren't you meant to be... He didn't show, so I thought... Really? Nino gazed into the empty room and then back at Marinette, giving her a shrug. Strange? He didn't mention he had plans. He darted back into his bedroom and then back into the hallway, clutching his phone to his ear. A buzzing noise came from Adrian's bedside table as his phone lit up. Oh! Marinette sighed, glancing at her watch. It was approaching 7am and she needed to head if she would not be late again for college. You are right, girl? Alia placed a hand on Marinette's shoulder. Yeah, I'm fine. Could do with a girl chat, though, at some point. Sure, Alia said in a soft voice, trying to read her friend's mind. Thanks. I better head, otherwise I'll be late. Okay, this weekend we'll have a catch-up. Alia wrapped her arms around Marinette's shoulders, who for a brief second looked like she was going to cry. Sounds good. I probably need a break from all the work I need to do for the exhibition and now fashion show I have to submit designs to. Alia raised her eyebrows. Fashion show? Yeah, I'll tell you in the catch-up. Marinette gave her a knowing look. Are you still coming to the Halloween party? Said Nino, looking from one woman to the other, not understanding the silent messages they were sending to each other. I don't know. Marinette glanced back into Adrian's vacant room. I have so much to do. Think about it. It might do you some good. Let your hair down. Alia smiled. I'll think about it. But I better shoot. I'll tell Adrian you came by when he comes back. Probably miss each other. Nino said, trying to dismiss the worry in his own voice and convince his friend. Sure. Thanks, Nino. Marinette smiled. He was one of the good ones. Bye. Marinette closed the door behind her and sighed to herself. Chapter 7 Cat had regretted the three little words as soon as they escaped his lips. He had meant every single letter, but saying them out loud on the back of the kiss was playing with fire. Part of him sighed with relief when he realised she hadn't heard him. But if she had, at least it was one less secret bottled up inside of him, ready to explode like a shaken champagne bottle. He needed to take a step back from the situation and suddenly the necessity for air was urgent. He slid his arm out from underneath her, receiving a little groan from his sleeping princess, followed by a sharp pain in his chest. Oh, how much he wanted to stay. Oh, how much he wished his life was simple and the only care he had was if his lady loved him back. But it wasn't and the day before had shown him that. He had almost fallen apart during a Kuma fight, all because of his all-consuming love for this woman lying next to him. If it hadn't been for her foresight to use second chance, what would have happened? Where would he be now? With one last rebellion against his head, he leaned in and kissed her on her warm forehead filling his senses of a sweet scent he knew would linger with him for the rest of the day. Oh, this pain of being so close and yet alone was too much. No, step back, get some air. Forcing himself not to mutter another word, he pushed open her window and jumped out. The crisp of the night air hit his face and felt good. He took a deep breath, pulled out his baton. He found he couldn't go far from her, landed on Notre Dame roof and walked over to the maintenance platform before transforming back. Plague floated out in front of him with a complex look on his scrunched up face. Adrian, 
Why aren't we back in our room? Where I have a stunning age to perfection, love of my life waiting for me. I needed a little night air before we headed back. Adrian wiped away a tear that had broken through his reinforced dam, pulling his knees to his chest as he stared at Marinette's balcony in the distance. Kid, what happened? Plag said in an unusual soft voice. I kissed her, and I told her. Adrian pulled out the piece of cheese he had kept hidden and threw it in the air for his Kwame to catch. Your identity? Plag muttered through a mouthful. No, that I love her. But she was asleep, so... You kissed her? I would have thought that would make you happy. Not sitting on a roof, freezing our butts off. Plag darted around and then gave a little shudder before sitting on Adrian's shoulder for warmth. I was, and she even kissed me back, and it was everything I dreamt about. But what's the problem? The problem? I was Cat and not Adrian. I was hoping she would fall for Adrian, the person who would take her out on dates and form some sort of relationship with her, instead of having our secret meetings under the stars as Cat, where in the morning I have to leave her. Kid, I know. I'm a mess at the moment. The situation is a mess at the moment. Adrian lowered his forehead on top of his folded arms. I just needed space to breathe and to think for a little while before we headed back. Adrian felt Plag snuggle in between his neck and hoodie. There were moments when he was so glad to have this tiny friend in his life where there was no secrets. Adrian woke to the sun peering behind a building in front of him as the grey hue of light shone down on him. Blast! What time was it? Even though Cat had issues at the moment, Adrian had a standing appointment with Marinette at the park. He heard Plag groan as Adrian searched his pockets for his phone. Blast! He'd forgot to transform with it. With the height of the sun already glaring down on him, he knew he was late to meet her. What excuse could he give her? That he had slept in? That he fell asleep on the roof of Notre Dame? Would she have even turned up to see Adrian after kissing Cat last night? The memory of the perfect moment as the rain had poured down over the entwined bodies, as she had pulled him in closer and kissed him with such perfection, cracked a smile through his sullen face. Without thinking, he brushed his icy fingers across his lips. How much he wanted to repeat that action throughout the night, but she hadn't even tried to kiss him again. Did that mean it was a spur of the moment? A relapse after regretting it? But he couldn't do it again. Not as Cat. She would need to love Adrian or not at all. No. By crossing that line last night, he realised he needed to end their meetings under the stars. It was getting too complicated now. But the idea that if she didn't like Adrian in that way, he would lose the chance to be near her, to hold her, to love her. Enough. Focus, Adrian. One task at a time. First, he would need to make it up to her for missing their arranged slot. Plag, close out. Cat Noir jumped across the rooftops and used the momentum of his staff to guide through the air. He forced the action to go faster to the point he felt like he was flying. Freedom. He landed in the fire escape next to his window and climbed in. He would normally change into a nearby alleyway and go in as normal, but this morning he didn't want to face his friends. Fingers crossed they would still be asleep as they had a free period this morning. Close in, Adrian announced, collapsing onto his bed and about to close his eyes when... There you are! Alia stormed into his room, holding a cup of coffee and a stare that made his already cold body now freezing. Alia? How about knocking first? Yeah, sorry, but you've had us worried this morning. Adrian bolted up, right? 
Worried? Why? You and Nino? Nino peered his head around the side of Alia, who stood in the doorway with one hand on her hip and glared at him. Sorry, dude. Alia, that wasn't cool. Alia ignored the warning glance from Nino and stepped further into Adrian's room. Me, Nino, and Mari. Mari? She came by. Adrian did a quick search around his room for his phone and saw it on his bedside table. Sure enough, there was a missed call and a message from her. When you didn't show this morning, she was worried about you and came here. Oh, was all Adrian could say, his head a jumble of thoughts of happy, guilt and confusion. She also bought you this. Nino weaved past Alia and presented Adrian with a green juice, his usual. Adrian reached out and took the plastic drink cup that had a smiley face drawn on it with one of her pink markers. A smile broke through his irritated expression. And a coffee, but I drank that. Adrian shot her a look. What? She woke us at 6.40. It's the least you can do. Adrian took a mouthful of the juice. It tasted good and moved his attention to the clock on his phone. It was 7.30. He knew she would be in her bedroom now, rushing around getting ready for class. Should he call her? Explain. No. She would be too busy, and yet, she had worried about him. He even got his favourite order and brought it round. If she was worried, the not knowing would eat away at her, distracting her. He would send her a quick message and call her later. Adrian? What? He had forgotten they were still standing in his room and his patience was grown thin. Where were you this morning? Alia's clear frustration was emitted in her tone and stared to mirror his own. I... we missed each other, that's all. That's all? You guys didn't have a falling out? No, why? Adrian paused mid-typing out a message. She looked a little... She looked a little distracted. Nino added. She looked upset. Alia gave Adrian a questioning look, knowing somehow he had something to do with it. Upset? Adrian said in a low voice. I'll give her a call, straighten it out. Good, you do that. That's enough, Alia. Get some coffee and leave Adrian in peace. Plus, I think you owe him one. Nino turned Alia around on the spot under protest and then stopped. Sorry, Adrian. It's just... Mari isn't just my best friend. She is more like my sister and I be, become protective, especially when she is, you know, upset. I understand. She's lucky to have you. Adrian gave her a forgiving smile, but there was a hint of sorrow in his voice he hadn't meant to show. Nino, reading the room, chimed in. Dude, do you fancy a game tonight? Just the boys? Sounds great, man. Adrian relaxed into a smile and was grateful to have friends that cared so much. He needed to remember that more in the future. Cool. We'll leave you to it. Nino placed his hand on Ali's shoulder and guided her back out the door, this time with no protest. Adrian took another mouthful of the delicious green juice his body appreciative of the goodness. Marinette was thoughtful, enough to bring it for him. She was worried about him. She was upset. Guilt of last night as Cat, leaving her alone this morning with a mountain of questions, only to stand her up as Adrian. He didn't deserve this juice, this gesture of kindness, not when he knew what he had to do. He placed down the juice cup and pressed on the voicemail icon. Hey, it's me, Marinette, standing in the park, alone. Hope everything's alright. Call me when you get this. Bye. He loved the sound of her sweet voice, but noticed the tone Alia had mentioned. The pang of guilt was increasing, eating at him. He pulled up the text message she had sent, glancing at the time difference of five minutes. He knew without him there to push her, to challenge her, she wouldn't do it. His grin gave way to tight lips, the torture of knowing her so well. Hey, 
I'm heading to our usual cafe for a cup of tea. It's a tad cold out this morning. Call me. Kiss. She still ended it with a kiss. A friend kiss? Adrian forced back the image of last night, replaying it for the hundredth of time. He replied, Hey, sorry about this morning. We must have missed each other. I left my phone back in my room. Lies. More lies. I'll call you when you're free. Kiss. Sent. Oh, and... Oh, and thanks for the drinks. Kiss, kiss. His finger slipped on the second kiss. Oh, did it? He had expected to see three dots appear, not the phone to ring. Hey! Hearing Marinette's phone on the other end caused an enormous grin to spread across his lips. Hey, sorry, I... It's fine. I hope you're all right. There she goes again, looking after him instead of herself. She always put others first. Yeah, I'm good. The conversation felt awkward between them for some reason. Normally they could spend hours on the phone, chatting back and forth with no issues. Thanks for the drinks. You're welcome. I just wanted to check, but I better go. Yeah, wait, are you coming to the party tomorrow night? Silence, but instead of filling it, he let her think. He could picture her now at a desk, either fiddling with a random piece of thread or doodling in a sketch pad. I don't know. He heard the sorrow in her voice. Adia had told him about. I have so much work at the moment, submitting designs. I might just have to stay in and work this weekend. What if you came to the party with me and I'll come over on Sunday and help you? Help me? There was a hint of laughter in her voice that made his heart melt. Yeah, model for you? Keep you focused on task? There was a jest in his voice and her chuckle grew to a laugh. <laughs> More like a distraction. Excuse me, I'm a very good taskmaster, I like to think. There it was, the usual banter back and forth, which for a moment he had taken for granted. Please, Marinette. Come to the party with me? With you? He realised it sounded like he was asking her out on a date. Should he follow through with it? Confirm it as a date? The awkwardness had returned when he suddenly realised he hadn't replied. Yeah, okay. Alia won't stop bugging me either if I don't come with the three of you. It was too late. His stomach dropped. Great! He tried to sound cheerful. That sounded a little false. I'd better go. I'll text you later. Sure. Bye. Her voice called out before the line went dead. He stared at the moving screensaver of pictures of his friend. A lot of them marinette. Great start to the day. Stood his princess up, almost asked her out on a date as Adrian only to fail and planned to spend an entire day with her on Sunday. As a friend, trying his hardest not to want to kiss her. What could go wrong? Chapter 8 Marinette put the phone down to Adrian, staring at the sketch she had been doodling out as they spoke when she received a text message from Zoe. Hey, looks like we're having a day off to work on the designs. I read on the community page, Mr. Buford has meetings this morning. Happy sketching and see you tomorrow. Cheers for letting me know. Much needed news. Yeah, see you at the Halloween party. Not sure what I'm going to wear... Marinette wasn't sure if she should add a witch or a pumpkin emoji in line with the American theme. So much different from the French laid-back approach to Halloween. Yeah, me and Luca are excited about dressing up, but going as some sort of retro American rock icons? Oh, I can't wait to see that. Is Luca going to let you punk up his hair? <laughs> LOL, 
that would be the day, but now you have me thinking. Zoe added a devil face to the text, causing Marinette to let out a much needed laugh. Zoe followed it up with another text. Oh, why don't you wear the dress you've been secretly working on? The one you thought I didn't know about, adding a weak new face. I only saw the designs, but I think it would look fierce with a mask. You have time now. The dress hadn't been her usual design, but she had enjoyed experimenting at something new and let out her inner princess. The word reminded her of Cat, and the thought of his expression at seeing her in it would be priceless. But that couldn't happen, could it? It wasn't that kind of relationship, but how she wished it was. No. Today for herself and not getting lost in the crazy maze of boys' minds. Yeah, I might do. Thanks, Zoe. Can't wait to see your outfits tomorrow. Kiss. Happy sketching, Murray. Kiss. Marinette smiled, grateful to have such a good friend who understood her passion for fashion and sharing this other side of her. Alia was the best person, but her passion lay in journalism and crafting a path out for herself through social media. She wouldn't know the difference between a hidden backstitch or a stoating or how she could spend five hours on a centimetre size of embroidery. She gave her encouragement at her designs and yet, when Zoe made a compliment, Marinette knew Zoe understood. Tiki, we have a day off today. Marinette called out as she watched a red blur speed past her, chasing after a speck of purple and using a high-pitched voice. Marinette chuckled as she shook her head, leaving them to it. After grabbing her coffee from the kitchen, some fruit and baked good for the little ones, she curled up on a chase with her headphones on playing some nondescript instrumental piece of music that helped her focus. Today was a me day. Parents still believing she had college gave her at least six hours of uninterrupted time before they might try to grab her to help her out in the bakery. She continued to sketch at a tailored dress design that had an asymmetrical skirt in contrast to the statement body piece to go in line with her 1940s inspiration. The theme had been time, which had been an abstract as it sounded. How do you design fashion around time? She knew the second year project was challenging, but Mr. Buford was taking the mickey with this one. When researching, Marinette stumbled across various classic Hollywood actresses and thought, timeless. After finishing her cup of coffee and a pastry later, convincing herself she needed the sugar for brain power, she relented to the fact that her muse wasn't visiting her today. In fact, she was on holiday somewhere, far, far away, with no cell reception. Marinette let out a little groan. Why today when she had time? She leant back and closed her eyes, allowing the calming music to wash over her. Her mind drifting from image to image, recapping the last 48 hours. No wonder she was emotionally, physically and inspirationally drained. From the events of the Kuma battle, the confusion over Adrian, and then riding the roller coaster that was Cat. Nope, she wasn't going there. Not that she knew where there was. She had been so caught up in everyone else's demands and needs, she was forgetting about addressing her own. The only need she had at the moment was to escape. Knowing how selfish that sounded, yeah. Escape from the ever-growing pressure building up around her, knowing she didn't have the answers to any of it. Without her realising, her pencil had been skipping the page, crafting out an idea and the beginnings of a mask were forming. Removing her headphones, she made her way to a wardrobe where she kept her fashion designs and pulled out the dress. It was a pink but a soft pink that you would see on cherry blossom or a summer peony in full bloom. That was where she had gotten the idea. She had treated herself to a bouquet from a market stall and watched how the bulbs came to life. The umpteen delicate petals appeared in front of her until she was gazing at this round flower that if she turned upside down, looked like a skirt you would see in a 1950s film star. 
that's how this peony dress came to be. The eight layers of soft pink chiffon floated against the tall underskirt and the tight bodice with a sweetheart neckline. It was a princess dress that would make even Disney envy, she chuckled to herself. She held up the mask sketch against the dress. If she added a bit of lace, an ombre or pink across it and gave herself dark smoky eyes, that could work. She almost felt giddy at the thought of leaving behind the pressure of one mask and wearing another. Are you going to wear it at the party? Tiki floated in and out of the delicate fabric of the dress. Tiki floated in and out of the delicate fabric of the dress. I think so. Would that be crazy? But it looked too over the top compared to retro rock stars and whatever Alia and Nino had brewing up in their costumes. I think you'll look and feel stunning, Marinette, and you deserve to have some fun, Tiki declared. Thank you, Tiki. Oh, why am I so nervous at the idea? Because you look beautiful and stand out against others. You have been used to taking a step back and letting others shine. So the idea of stepping forward would be nervous, but use the advantage of the mask and show a little ladybug. Tiki giggled at the fabric rippling in the light breeze tickling her tiny body. Okay, I can do that. Princess Ladybug. Chapter 9 She hadn't got to bed until late finishing the dress with a few scattered cherry blossoms embroidered on it so that it had a cheeky hint of Ladybug. Otherwise, how would she be Princess Ladybug? She gave the mask a final coating layer to seal in the details and left it out to dry. So being woken early by an Akuma battle wasn't what she needed. Thankfully, it was an easy one. Since the battle with Storm, she was grateful to fight a regular kumatized victim who made everyone stand still, which had ended up being a mom who needed just a moment of peace. The only issue Marinette had was the confusion at Hawk Moth's plan and why he jumped from one extreme to the other. If only she knew what the rules were to this game. Okay, that wasn't the only issue. Seeing Kat for the first time since that last night was strange, but that kiss had happened with Marinette and not Ladybug, and she needed to act that way. Stealing glances at him when he was studying the scene before him was distracting to say the least. When the battle was over, she was sure he could barely look at her, doing the usual pound it gesture and then scooted off instead of catching up like they normally did. Perhaps he didn't feel comfortable around Ladybug now that he had expressed feelings for Marinette. She just wished he would pop round and talk so that he could straighten it out. If he did date Marinette, would it be better or worse his relationship with Ladybug than it was now? She had been thinking over the past couple of days, and one of the biggest hurdles against them being together was the day when it came to finding out who Ladybug was. Whether it was one month, today, or ten years' time, one day it would happen, and how will he react? Would he blame her for keeping it from him? Would he be happy that all this time he had been Marinette fighting alongside of him? Would he still love her? For now, she had to put that out of her head. She had a few hours to get ready and become princess at twenty for one night. The idea made her laugh and fearful all at once. As part of the deal, she had agreed with Adrian for him to pick her up and take her to the party, since he was the one insisting, and, to be honest, she didn't like the idea of walking the subway as a princess and tried to find the party. It was being held in an abandoned manor house near the campus, but that was all they said. She braided part of her hair back, leaving the rest a tousle over her shoulders. She kept with the smoky eye idea, causing her already large blue eyes to widen and pop. She stepped into the dress, 
feeling the fabric engulf her tight against her chest and float from her hips as if there were feather-light petals attached to her. This dress had worked. It made her feel like a princess. Apart from one thing, she couldn't zip up the back. She stretched her arms round, struggling to get the last part. Wow, came a voice behind her. A sudden rush covered her body, creating a shiver to run through her spine and goosebumps to form on her skin. There she turned round. Wait, I'll help. May I? He breathed, standing behind her. Breathe. Breathe, Marinette. Just breathe. She kept telling herself as his leather hands brushed against her back. Thank you, Cat. Her voice struggled out of her mouth. Why was he having this effect on her? Standing behind her, his breath on her neck and being so close. Once he had finished zipping up the last bit, he stroked his hand over her shoulders and up her arms. You really are my... a princess. She turned round and saw the awestruck expression as he stared into her eyes. In one move, she could kiss him. She could wrap her arms around him and feel herself fall into his arms. But instead, he took a step back and sighing. The moment had passed. What brings you here, Kitty? She tried to sound light, joyous, but in reality, she was confused. Well, he took a gulp, casting his gaze downwards and then to fix a point in the room, anywhere but her. I had a fight today and I didn't know if you expected me, but I can't stay. You have somewhere better to be? She had tried to sound jokingly, but it didn't have that effect. No, no, it looks like you do though. He gestured towards the dress. One of your own creations, I presume? Of course. Do you like it? I don't look silly in it. I mean, 20 years old and dressed up as a princess for Halloween. She hadn't meant to show the fear and the foolishness of being bottled up. Cat took a step closer, holding her gaze and reached his hand up to cup her face. You are stunning. You take my breath away. She could tell he wanted to kiss her as much as she wanted to kiss him. If he asked her to stay tonight and curl up with him, she would have, forget the rest and simply be with him. Letting out a long breath as he had forgotten to breathe, his hand dropped from her face. You had better go, princess. The magic might run out at midnight. He stepped back and jumped to the window. Cat, we need to talk. We will. I'll see you soon, princess. With that, he was gone. What had just happened? Why was her partner, her kitty, having this effect on her? But the biggest question she had was, why didn't he want to kiss her again? Her phone buzzed on the desk, and it was from Adrian waiting outside for her. Taking a deep breath, composing her nerves and the sudden rush to her body, she added in the little purse flower to her dress for Tiki. Tiki? Hide in here. She had disappeared at the sight of Cat entering the room, reappearing once he was gone. We had better go. Can't leave Adrian waiting. Her little friend understood the confusion and angst in Marinette's voice. Marinette, you look beautiful, and I'm sure it will work out with Cat. You just have fun tonight, okay? Thank you, Tiki. I'm so grateful for you and our friendship. Tiki flew up and gave her a quick hug on her cheek before flying down to a secret pouch, giggling at the fabric, tickling her. Marinette placed on the alternative mask and became Princess Ladybug. Not Marinette, who was fearing she was falling in love with Cat. Not Ladybug, who had to deal with the evil in Paris and the pressure of trying to figure it out and protect a city. No, she was Princess Ladybug who for one night had the magic to forget her troubles and simply have some fun in a floaty pink dress.
Marinette carefully climbed down the stairs, bidding goodnight to her parents, who were gushing over her creation and demanding a picture or two. She opened the door to see Adrian leaning against a silver, 1950s convertible, looking rather handsome. Marinette, you look amazing, stunning. I'm struggling for words. Even in the darkness of the night sky, she could tell he was blushing. Why, thank you, my good sir. She dropped into a curtsy, as if meeting her prince at the ball. You are looking rather handsome yourself. Who's the character? She gestured to his outfit that resembles something described from a Jane Austen novel or a romantic period drama film that she had secretly enjoyed. With his tight waistcoat that showed off the hours of training they had been doing, in contrast to the looser trousers and the long overcoat, whilst his hair was perfect to the point she wanted to run her fingers through it. Get it together, Marinette. A moment ago you wanted to kiss Cat, and now you want to run your fingers through Adrian's hair and... No, that was wrong, wasn't it? Wanting two men at once? Adrian rubbed the back of his neck at her compliment. I'm the Count of Monte Cristo. Taking a bow in front of her and letting out a nervous laugh. That's one of your favourite books, isn't it? She walked closer to him, smiling, noticing the shocked expression on his face. What? You remember? That was a while ago I told you that. His face softened, tilting it to the side, trying to read her. Of course I remember. I was in love with you and was obsessed about any nugget of information you would tell me, she thought, chuckling at the idea of what he would say if he knew. Instead, she simply replied, why wouldn't I? Making him blush further. What is up with Adrian tonight? He opened the car door like a gentleman and paused, standing in front of her, close. You look breathtaking princess. His hand hovered in front of her, hesitating near her face before he moved it to the small of her back. Shall we? Why, thank you. He climbed in, pushing down her skirt. What is with the car? This isn't yours, is it? Adrian let out a little chuckle. No, I wish. I hired it for the night. A bird told me you might be dressed like Grace Kelly, so I thought... Grace Kelly? She turned out to be a real princess in the end, but this is really thoughtful. Thank you, Adrian. Her hand rested on his, noticing how clammy it was and how nervous he seemed. There was something different with him tonight, and she couldn't put her finger on it. She caught his piercing gaze under the street lamp and her heart raced in her chest. A feeling she hadn't allowed since declaring that they were only friends. And yet, the way he was staring at her reminded her of Cat. The yearning string between them, pulling her in. She moved her head to the side and kissed him on the cheek. It was longer than a peck, lingering slightly. If you wanted to. He could simply turn his head and kiss her. Thank you, she breathed into his ear. What was this confidence boost she was feeling? The power of a mask? Instead, Adrian turned back round, a deep red blush to his cheek and cleared his throat. <clears throat> we had better go. Chapter 10 With the last minute designing and then the appearance of Cat, Marinette had forgotten the, about the jacket part of her dress and now regretted it in the crisp October night air. She tried not to show the cold forming goosebumps on her skin from the light chilly breeze as they drove through the streets, wrapping her arms around herself, smiling at people gazing at the dressed up pair in the extraordinary car. Are you all right, my princess, Marinette? Adrian smiled with a hint of pink on his cheeks that made his handsome face become adorable. 
Yes, this is lovely, thank you. She gave an involuntary shudder at the sudden gush of wind. Are you cold? Did you bring a jacket? Adrian's eyes darted around her and the car and not that there was much to search. I forgot. She let out an embarrassed chortle. I'm fine though, it's okay. Well, I don't think it's the moonlight giving your skin that light blue of hue. She could tell he was attempting to hold back a light giggle. Marinette couldn't help but roll her eyes. I could be a moon princess. Her body releasing another shudder. Wait a second. The car pulled up a red light and Adrian quickly slid his arms out of his period woolen overcoat before the lights changed to amber, handing it to her. She wrapped it around her and beamed at him. You really are a prince, thank you. She snuggled into the blend of Adrian and the warmth of the fabric, comforted by the smell of his aftershave that distinctively smelt familiar. She relaxed into the seat, pulling the coat tightly around her, able to enjoy the scene in front of her as she gazed at the street lamps glistening on the rain-washed cobbles. This could be very romantic if she allowed herself to think that way. Unable to help herself, she glanced sideways at Adrian, who she had to admit was looking rather handsome tonight. As the wind caught his blonde hair and rippled against his exposed white shirt, as the soft glow of the night light highlighted his facial features. A wide grin spread across his lips as she watched his gaze shift to the side. Feeling better? He said softly, still beaming at the road in front of him. Much. Thanks again. You're so thoughtful and sweet. She could feel herself blushing for a reason she couldn't admit to herself. No, you are the thoughtful one. Bringing me the green juice and coffee? Alia <laughs> ended up drinking the coffee, didn't she? Marinette had a laughter to her voice as an image of Alia smirked at Adrian filtered her mind. Yes, that woman has no shame. But I mean it. You didn't have to. And I'm sorry we missed each other that morning. There was a sadness in his tone that she hadn't expected to hear it. Had it meant that much to him? Was it that he missed their workout or that he felt he had let her down? She made sure there was a lightness to her tone that there was nothing to worry about. It's fine. Those things happen. I was just concerned. It hadn't happened before, so I wanted to check. Plus, I think gesturing towards the car. This has more than made up for it, she beamed at him. She watched how his shoulders lowered as her words sank in, removing the stress and tension he was feeling. Well, if I had known you were wearing that dress, I would have gotten a horse-drawn carriage, he let out a little chuckle. Ha ha, is it too much? The dress, you think it is, don't you? She ran her hands nervously over the dress that was sticking up out of the seat. Her hand stopped when she felt Adrian place his over hers briefly. A burst of electricity emitted between their touch. A gesture they had done thousands of times. But suddenly, this one felt different. It meant something different. It was intimate, kind and gentle that created a soothing sensation wash over her. Wow, since when had this happened? I meant what I said. You look stunning, Marinette. It's never too much, not with you wearing it. He said with earnest and a tenderness she hadn't expecting, causing her to become speechless. In that moment, she wanted to wrap her arms around his, feel the soothing, protective embrace. No, no, this was Adrian. She had that with Kat. She had that connection with her kitty. Then why did she suddenly think that she had that with Adrian too? Thank you, Adrian. My prince. She smiled as the blush continued to spread across his cheeks and even reach his ears. So cute. For the last ten minutes of the drive, they were happy to be in the moment. The nighttime noises of Paris this evening became the soundtrack as they took turns stealing glances. 
Adrian pulled the car into a free space amongst the row of cars, parked outside the haunted house. The disused manor was part of the regional university and dated back to at least the 1700s by her guessing. She loved a rich history of Paris, how there were still buildings that were there before the 1100s and hadn't been destroyed by the fires. Since Adrian had started his degree and majored in history, he enjoyed taking Marinette on walks around Paris as he drank tea and coffee, whilst he explained the history of the area you would never expect. The wonder of time. It was a good job she was no longer had the Bunnock's Miraculous and had given it to Alex full time. The temptation to use it was high. She could wow Adrian as she took him to various moments of time. Nevertheless, Bunnix wouldn't allow that. The effects on timeline and all that. Marinette? Are you okay? She smiled, casting out her wandering mind. Yeah, just impressed how someone had managed to convince the powers to allow a party to happen here, in the old part. Apparently is about to get restored, starting in the next couple of months, so this is a one-off experience. He grinned at her, their eyes locked. Oh, blast! That sensation was starting to emerge. No, get back into your hiding spot. But this time, it didn't want to listen. Quickly, Marinette distracted herself by taking the overcoat off her shoulders and handed it back to Adrian, who held a look of confusion. Thank you for the use, but I'm warm now. The confusion shifted to a cheeky smirk. You want to make a grand entrance, like Cinderella, don't you? And impress the prince? The show of my dress? Why not? She lowered her voice. I already found my prince, but I'm hoping for a dance later. Silence. He placed his overcoat back on and glanced around the small crowd that had formed around the front of the building. A hand dropped as her insides curled into a knot. Had she misread the signs? They had danced before over the years as friends, so why wouldn't he want to now? He slowly turned and placed his fingers under her chin and lifted it to meet his gaze. He shifted closer, so that they were close to the point of seeing the colours change in his emerald eyes. The knot became tighter, holding her breath and becoming a statue. He dropped his gaze, breaking the trance as she took a deep breath, steadying her nerves before he gently held her hand in his, removing the breath once more. Lifting up a hand, he brushed a kiss lightly across the back of a palm replacing the electricity between the skin and his lips. The action brought an image of Cat, but as Ladybug. How he used to perform the move to woo her? No, this was Adrian, not Cat. Stop thinking of Cat. I would love to dance with you, my princess. The velvet sound of his voice melted her insides and unraveled the knot inside of her. But at the same time, inside her mind, she was ramming an image of Cat into a box, slamming the lid shut and sitting on top of it so it wouldn't come out again for the rest of the night. Shall we go in and find our friends? Yes, um, -hmm, was all she could muster at the moment. With her hand still inside his, as he manoeuvred through the crowd, she felt her fingers slide against the inside of his palm as he rotated his hand against hers until the fingers became entwined. The electricity tickled from her hand travelling up her arm to her heart, causing it to beat faster inside her chest. She decided in that moment not to question every move and hide away, but instead allow it to naturally develop to see where it might lead, even if it meant falling down the rabbit hole and into a wonderland. Stepping out of her head and back into the present moment, she could hear the Backstreet Boys' classic 97 song, Everybody, in the background, seeping out of the house, drawing them closer and making her hips bop to a catchy beat. Marinette glanced around the people who were dressed up to the extreme. Some were typical horror scenes, covered in fake blood. Some were clowns, which actually scared her more than the fake rubber knives hanging off someone's head. There were even cartoon characters dotted around the group. 
The manor house was fitted and dressed in the tip. The manor house was fitted and dressed in the stereotypical haunted house style, with large cobwebs draped around door frames and space lit by various antique lighting with a few additional green bulbs thrown in. The place was heaving with students, shuffling to the music in the corridor, making it difficult to find one or two people. They needed to head to the main hall where most of the dancing was taking place. She felt Adrian gripping tighter onto her hand so not to lose her as they excused their way through the bigger group. People had started to take notice of her dress, gazing at it in astonishment, standing out in the crowd. So clearly no other 20 year old was dressed like a princess. I like the dress. Marinette heard a male voice beside her. She turned and saw an attractive guy dressed like a character she hadn't recognised step back, giving her a space to move, casting his gaze around her and then giving her a wide grin. At the same moment, Adrian halted in his step and turned to face the guy, giving him a warning look with at least six inches height difference and a wider build to the sky waited for the man to turn away before moving on. She gave Adrian's hand in hers a light squeeze, which she replied with his thumb making a shape in the side of a palm that she couldn't make out. And yet, it still managed to send a shiver racing to her heart. Marinette never felt threatened by this random guy, and if she had, she knew she could handle it as Marinette or as Ladybug, but seeing Adrian step in and become his protective was new, and she kind of enjoyed seeing that side of him. Not that she was actually his to protect, nevertheless, the idea of them together started to curl inside her mind and heart, a relationship that could have a future, unlike the one with Cat. No. Get back into the box. The song shifted from everybody to this is Halloween from Nightmare Before Christmas. Could only be done by one DJ. Adrian glanced around at Marinette, grinning as they both said, Nino! They knew exactly where to find their friends. They made their way past the entry hall and the grand staircase. The main hall had a temporary stage set up at the far end with stage lights shining down on the centre of the dance space, filled with people trying to dance to this random track with a few tables scattered around the sides and a bar against the wall with the exit. She saw Adrian burst out laughing as he pointed at the DJ situated on the stage with a large plastic pumpkin on his head. That was definitely Nino which meant Alia would be nearby and dressed like Lois Lane, which he knew was Superman to love and journalist, but had no idea what that would look like. Girl! Marinette grinned and turned to face where the voice was coming from and saw Alia approaching dress in an 80s skinny skirt, blouse and a wide belt that showed off her hourglass figure. That dress? Is utter crazy. You look magical. Alia grabbed her free hand and tried to pull her towards her, then saw her best friend's hand intertwined in Adrian's. She raised her eyebrow first at Adrian, giving him a searching stare, which he replied with a smirk. Interesting. Then she moved her focus to Marinette, which she knew all too well that they would be discussing this during their next up and coming girly night. Nino shifted the track from This Is Halloween to Thriller, causing the dance floor to transform into lines as the song started with the stomping of the feet, howling and then the unmistakable tune kicked in with the thriller. The four lines started to dance, moving as one with the hands up in the air at the same time as the feet, moving like goals across the dance floor. It was an impressive sight, but with the arrangement of the costume characters moving as one made it comical. The three watched on, laughing so much they doubled over and Marinette struggled to breathe, catching her breath amongst fix of laughter. What made it even better, Nino came onto the mic and pretended to be the nightmarish voice on the soundtrack, acting it out. Once the song had ended and Nina replaced it with a more modern dance tune, the group recovered, swiping away the tears. 
I think we girls need a trip to the bathroom while Adrian gets some drinks. Adrian chuckled, knowing the pair well enough. Very well. What would you like, Marinette? A cranberry juice, please? Their hands slowly slid away from each other, tingling at his touch. Catching his gaze, she saw a wanting in his look and instantly she understood it. A desire to be near, to hold hands, or the skin touching in some form. Pulling her gaze away, she found herself lingering on his lips and then saw him blush and grin as she rolled her bottom lip between her front teeth and taking a deep breath. I will have a howler mocktail, please, Adrian, and you come with me. Alia dragged Marinette in one direction as Adrian veered off into the crowd surrounded the makeshift bar. With only his golden blonde hair sticking out, he glanced around one last time and she saw him staring straight at her with a childlike grin, making her chuckle and blush. What was happening between them? This felt so much more different than anything else before, as if there was something drawing the two together. No, I promised myself I wouldn't question and hide. I'm going to trust myself and Adrian and be me and see what happens. What is happening between the two of you? The hand-holding, the looks? Are you too official? Did you finally declare your love to him? Alia pushed the door open to one of the bathrooms, studying Marinette's every gesture. No, nothing has happened. Oh, come on now, girl, Alia said in a frustrated tone. I mean it, we haven't talked, not that one. But he began to act differently towards me and I decided not to question it and hide. I'm following his lead and see where this naturally goes. But I have to admit, it's starting to dig up my old feelings towards him that I thought I had buried deep because I thought he would never... Alia stepped towards her and cupped Marinette's face as if she was a child, telling her a truth. <laughs> my silly Marinette, his feelings for you have been shifting for a while. I think you're the only one who hasn't seen it. But it... Adrian! Marinette's mouth fell open slightly as Alia let go. Like you said, follow your heart tonight and see where it leads. So clean that face up and get back out there. Alia nudged her in front of the mirror and then led her friend back out, who was having a mild freakout. She saw Adrian standing next to the stage, holding her drink whilst he talked to Nino without his pumpkin head holding a school head mug with a pink umbrella coming out of it. Her stomach was doing somersaults at this gorgeous man standing in front of her, who was her childhood crush and then her best friend and one of the most important persons in her life. If they took this risk and failed, what would happen to their friendship? Is it worth the risk? Can she do it? As if she was flooded with the light of a sunrise after the dark, his eyes locked on hers. She knew in that moment she had to at least see, to take the leap and hope. He will carry her heart with his. Hi. She directed it straight at him and could already feel the blush forming on her cheeks. Hey. He leaned down closer to her and held out her drink for her with a gentle smile on his lips. But his eyes still held that wanting gaze until his fingers brushed against his, taking the drink from him. Hey Marinette, love the dress, Nina called out, breaking the trance. Marinette turned round with Adrian standing close behind her a free hand hanging loose by her side as his hand brushed against hers, tempting her to grab hold of it and make the next move. It was as if there was some sort of magnetic force happening between them, drawing every part of her body next to his. Whatever was happening, it was causing her head to spin. Hey Nino, cheers, great tunes by the way. Thought I'd go a bit retro. Here, babe, you drink. Nino passed Alia her drink. 
Thanks, Adrian. What's with the mug? Adia rotated the school in her hand and stared at him with a what's next look. It came that way. Adrian shrugged his shoulders. Oh, you have an umbrella in yours. Marinette did a mock disappointment glance at a simple glass of cranberry juice. She felt Adrian shift next to her and held out a little umbrella for her. Oh, for me? That's like when... Her voice veered off. Was it too soon to mention the moment she had fallen in love with him? When I gave you my umbrella. He saw something flash across his face as if he had remembered something. You remember that? She breathed, taking a step closer, her fingers touching his. Of course I do. You looked adorable as it closed over you. Adrian let out the same chuckle as he pushed her fringe out of her eyes. Wow, used to? Alia scoffed. Alia! Marinette called out, turning the darker shade of beetroot. I had better jump back on, Nina gestured back to the decks. Are you taking any requests? Adrian moved away from Marinette and whispered into Nina's ear. It too gave Marinette an idea and once Adrian moved back, Marinette requested her own song. Nina stepped back and looked at the two of them with a smirk, followed by a wink at Alia. So, what did you ask for? Marinette stepped closer to Adrian and placed a drink on the side table. Oh, you'll see. May I have this dance? He gave her a prince-like bow that made Alia burst out laughing. Adrian escorted her to a free place on the dance floor, which expanded once the song Witchcraft by Frank Sinatra came on, resulting in strange looks towards Nino from the dancers. Adrian placed them into a waltz-like hold, softly stroked his fingers across her back. The moment was perfect. Her skirt swished around the dance floor, and he spun her to the point she was floating on air with only his arms anchoring her to the ground. They came to a stop once the song had finished, and she felt breathless. The hand from her back slowly drifted towards the neck, and finished with cupping her face, whilst the fingers entwined in the closed hands. So, you requested this song because you think I'm a witch, hey? Well, you've put some sort of spell on me. Adrian leaned forward, but Marinette couldn't help but laugh. Confusion washed over Adrian's face at her response. She moved her hand from her shoulder and placed it on his chest. Sorry! Listen, at that moment, Nina Simone's song, I Put a Spell on You, played. The song I requested? She shrugged her shoulders and gave him a little smile, doing her usual trait of rolling her bottom lip between her teeth. He edged closer, pulling her body next to his. Am I yours? He leaned his head down. Tell me the truth. Do I have a chance? Because I love you. She didn't allow him to finish the sentence. Reaching up on her tiptoes, she closed the gap as her lips lightly touched his. Her hands ran from his chest and into his hair, encouraging him closer. His green eyes glistened, locking onto hers as their passion for one another emitted out of their kiss. It was everything and more she had dreamed about doing for years, but never thought it would happen. She was kissing Adrian Agress. He loved her. He loves her. Adrian is in love with her. The room swirled around her as they paused, looking at each other. They had no idea what song was playing or who was dancing around them. Adrian, she whispered, keeping her focus on his face. Yes, my marinette. He brushed his fingers down the side of her face to her neck. Did you? Do you? At the last second, she dropped her gaze. If it had been a dream, she couldn't see the reality in his eyes. I love you, Marinette. I do. He lifted her chin up and saw her glazed eyes that were on the verge of tears. 
I have loved you for a while, but I never thought you... I love you. She blurted out as the tears of joy fell. I have loved you since you gave me this. She took the umbrella out of her flower bag. What I mean, the big one, not this actual one. I thought you would only ever see me as a friend and then you became my best friend. But I still loved you. I'm in love with you. He leaned in again and kissed her, pressing his smile against her smile. After a while, they pulled apart, remembering they were still at a party and surrounded by people. For the rest of the night, they danced until their feet hurt and exhaustion hit them, declaring it was time to head home. Marinette and Adrian bid goodnight to Ali and Nino, with a promise of a phone call tomorrow. They had forgotten to seek out their other friends. The night had been about them. They brushed it off, knowing they would understand as they climbed into the silver car. On the drive back to the bakery, Marinette felt the need to close her eyes just for a minute, leaning her head against Adrian's shoulder as he drove. She could feel the floating sensation as he carried her up the stairs in her blissful sleepy state. He laid down on the bed, pulling the covers over her and giving her a kiss goodnight on her forehead. Just when she felt him reaching away, she placed her arm out and grabbed his. Wait. Stay. Cuddles? Adrian Cuddles. She half opened her eyes to stare up at him. We can have breakfast together. And you promise to help me tomorrow? She pulled him closer. Please. Stay, my love. At her words, he grinned and nodded his head. Taking off his overcoat and shoes, he climbed in next to her, wrapping his arms around her as she lay her head on his chest. I'll be here in the morning, he whispered. I love you to the moon. I love you to the stars. She said through a yawn and fell asleep listening to his heart pounding.